Miter Sykes, picking and flipping. Hey, what's up? Mike with Miter Sykes here. And I thought I would do a video that's more along the lines of what do I do? You know, as far as reselling goes. And, you know, how do I thrift? That kind of stuff. Um, my sales, I'm part time, extremely. And I comfortably make. 100 plus each week right now and the only thing keeping me from going further at this point is space and uh yeah so let's dive into that and in order to show you guys that we are just pulling into here at thrift world one of our local chains and i'll show you what i look for hey folks decided to do a voice over here since i am not easy to hear and my audio is muffled due to the phone being in my pocket which is why you have really cruddy angles and i do apologize so do not grab a cart i look for the tag colors right now it's purple and yellow purple is a dollar yellow is 50 percent off and were it a sunday purple would have been 50 cents and yellow would have been a dollar next week will be yellow at a dollar and then whatever the following color and so on so on so right here i find these national geographic uh, CD-ROMs. I go over everything at the end, so stay tuned for that. And then after I go over everything, I actually show you um, searching up the comps for everything that I do get, so you can watch that process as well and see what I'll list everything for. Here I'm just checking electronics. Um, there was a DirecTV uh, receiver there that wasn't very interesting. Now, this little glass art piece is very interesting and I might have gotten it or at a different day but today is all about just showing you what I normally do which is find purple tags and I always look through this section and I'll be honest 99% of the time I come away with nothing however today was an anomaly of course the day that I was trying to record and show what a normal thrifting day was it's not going to be normal all right just looking through the glassware looking through the vases vases and i am now seeing that green dutch oven there i should have looked at that but i did not i was eyeballing this fondue set and i asked her kindly if she was going to get it first before taking it and she said she was not so I threw that in the cart that I went and picked up. And I'm just going to finish looking out. That pan right there um, was also a purple tag, but it had some scratches on the inside, and I just wouldn't feel comfortable selling it. The huge line of clothing there is women's, of course. <laughs> um, men's is back on the right there. Uh, I look through the figurines every single time we come here because I've found Fenton here before. Little hand-painted Fenton uh, figurines, which the wife and I collect. And uh, so that's why I check this aisle. I hardly ever look through this aisle for anything to sell. There's plenty of little knickknacks and stuff, and I'm sure if I picked everything up that was on the tag sales, I could run... Um, Poshmark Lives or uh, sell them on Poshmark for pretty darn cheap or whatnot even. So the uh, knickknacks will transition into the wood section. I have actually found a few things in the past in the wood section. Sometimes it's uh, wooden jewelry boxes and stuff like that that people have custom made and they'll sell for me. Decorative plates, I might glance at but that's about all it's ever going to get lamps i always check to see if there's that rare 200 dollars fenton lamp still haven't found it yet but i will one of these days i promise so again looking for purple tags here um there's a couple of nice inbox things i like this dude out here but it was a green tag which means it's new that's the new one going out uh, check the tags on all these things up here. Again, nothing that's purple. Uh, coffee makers. Oh, and I do point out this KitchenAid right here is beat up. They wanted $50 for it. Kind of ridiculous. 
didn't have any attachments or anything, but mm, whatever. Um, I do like looking through the holiday stuff and more so for, you know, antique or vintage ornaments. Um, I did find a little box of wooden ornaments from 1979, but they did not have a price tag. And I could have done a price check on them. I did take them up front. If they don't have a price tag, they typically won't sell it. There it is right there. Um, you can't really see it, but they... Um, I decided not to do the price check on it because they're not going to give it to me for a dollar. If they have to call someone out to look at it, they won't do that. Just know from experience. So here's the uh, transitioning into the Thanksgiving stuff. And they had a lot of neat um, turkey napkin holders. If you were to pause the video right there where I pan. Oh, there's a couple of them right there. But they're brand new. They just came out on the floor. So they're not on the sale. And then these Easter rabbits have been there pretty much all year they just keep adding to them. I could probably purchase the whole set of figurines at that point. And we have some uh, toys that we're going to go through next. Some plush. Uh, this guy was definitely a reseller the way he was looking at things. Um, no worries there. This bag of toys right here, if it didn't have a hole in it, I would have got it because I'm guessing there was something semi-valuable in there that someone poked a hole in and pulled out, which they do. Um, and then they'll add it to the color bag of that week to a different bag and steal it. Unfortunately, people are kind of evil there. That's how I found the whole little figurine pulled out. Now, there were a bunch of small toys in there, and again... If I was running a whatnot or something, which I haven't done a whatnot in a long time, I could have probably got my dollar back, no doubt. But I just didn't want to deal with the whole the rest of the shopping trip. So we're moving into the plush, and yes, there are a ton of plush. I could probably just stand and do a whatnot straight from the store and <laughs> do fine. There's all sorts of Disney and Care Bear and Charlie Brown and all sorts of stuff right there is... Uh, um, it looked like some Star Wars Angry Bird mix. There's a Sonic the Hedgehog Shadow Hog. I just saw that. But again, I'm looking at tag colors. I'm not even looking at the plush at this point. Uh, until I see a purple tag, I do not even expect the uh, plush. Because uh, there's blue from Blue's Clues and Squishmallows. And uh, it's kind of a whatnot haven but a lot of their plush are expensive like this guy here i believe they want three dollars for him but he's on the tag sale he's only a dollar but he's a kelly toy so i pick him up nice little view of mike wazowski there and there's like four minis that we just passed more squishmallows um you can usually find build-a-bears here and right now i think i'm looking at uh it's a uh, Purple tag, it's this little uh, unicorn, but it's pretty dirty. Didn't want to mess with it. And then uh, this right here, it's a 2000 Beanie Baby Tie Collectors Club bear. So I hardly ever pick up tie. However, this one should at least make me a little bit of a profit. So of course I pick it up. And then there was that sloth I picked up. And this little pillow here that I was just showing, it's a Yu-Gi-Oh pillow. And, uh, yep, there's that sloth right there. He is a dandy holiday Bigfoot sloth. And I don't search for dandy sloth later, which I should have done. Um, and, of course, I'm editing now, so I could technically go fix it, but I'm not going to. Uh, I should be able to make probably, I'll probably list him at about eighteen ninety five, dollars um, plus shipping, and then I'll take a best offer. Again, I'm only paying a dollar, so, and he'll crush down, or not crush down, he'll smush down into uh, a, sm a lot smaller box. And then I always check the board games at 
the thrift worlds I have found. This isn't the only thrift world. They're actually a chain store in my area. So there's one, two, three, four, five, I think six uh, in my in my area. So pretty good. Um, I have found a sealed Adventure Time um, game and then an Adventure Time Monopoly set. Those both brought me, or the sealed game brought me 45 and that sold within a couple of days the monopoly set i have listed for about the same so it's going to be pretty profitable and i i think i paid two bucks a piece on those i will pay up if it's something that's obviously a good seller this guy's actually pulling stuff off the shelves so i'm wondering if they're if he's just looking for broken stuff or if he's clearing room for new toys that are coming out with it being holiday season, um, maybe they're going to bring out some nicer stuff I have noticed. And maybe it's something new that they're doing. They're bringing out some nicer things. Um, this elephant is a purple tag and it's cute, but if you look at the foot there, it is nasty. It was caked with, will look like vomit. Um, I didn't check the tag on that Easy Bake Oven. I should have. Um, and then we're going to peruse the last of it here. I did find, um, I think you're going to see it here in a second, a Mickey plush in the toy area, which means, you know, some kid or somebody grabbed it and was going to get it and then just threw it back. Um, those are some vans. I check every pair of vans through here because sometimes I get lucky and nobody bought them. Or nobody's looked at them and they're on the tag sale. And vans are pretty easy to clean up. And maybe that Mickey's cut out or I cut back to it. But I check all of the boots um, on here as they do at Goodwill. Sometimes they use a um, one of those shiny markers. There's Mickey right there. Um, one of those shiny markers, and they'll put the price, and then they'll put the letter of the color, you know, P for purple, B for blue. So I always check the bottom of the shoe because the tag's on the inside. So here's my shirts. This is normally what I do. I would start at the either the triple X or the large and work my way down just looking at tags. So that purple uh, looks like Croft and Borrow. I would have pulled that out, looked for any defects, put it in the cart. Um, and then this next one, I believe, that I find is a Stafford, which I literally did sell one this morning, a Stafford shirt, very similar to that. Um, yeah, that was that Strife shirt right there. Um, and I just look for major defects. If there's none, put it in the cart. And I'll usually leave with one or two big pl clear plastic garbage bags full of shirts. And you'll see at the end, I have a stack of shirts that I still need to list. Um, since I've switched over to Vendu, I have been going back and trying to get rid of some of the old inventory by delisting and relisting. So I've kind of cut back on listing for now, but I am building up the winter death pile, the, uh, squirrel stash, uh, the stash of nuts for the winter, um, in case the roads get bad. Cause here in Omaha, you either have a mild summer Oh my gosh, look at this. Tommy Bahama, they wanted $15 for that shirt. I mean, that's probably what I'd list it at. And <laughs> I ended up, you know, selling it for $10 or $12. Um, and this HB shirt, I've been watching it for weeks. It goes on the t sale next week. So I may come back Sunday to get it. It's like little uh, flower fireworks. But those neat patterns, um, or unique patterns, I, say, I should say, those sell a little bit better. And that's all I'm doing now is just looking for anything that stands out. There's a Columbia shirt. I'm pointing out a couple of Columbias they want 10 bucks a piece for. And I, what thrift stores don't understand is they don't get the traffic that eBay does, so they can't really price things at eBay prices. Uh, this jacket was very nice. It was a pullover, uh, Steelers, NFL, um, but they wanted $35 for it. And again, you're not going to get people buying it. That was just a nice Ed, Ed, and Eddie shirt. But it was modern. Um, the shirt bros had just gone through right before me. I heard them 
talking, ooh, made in the USA, man, look what I found. So, <laughs> so for all you t-shirt bros out there, uh, no offense whatsoever, it's just pointing them out, that little Seahawks hoodie, this is a Columbia right here that they want, um, it was $15, I believe, on that, little zip-up sweatshirt, and they're not even vintage, they're more modern jackets, and I think the last one I show you is also Columbia, and it's just a brief, as it fades out here, but it's also Columbia, but it's a very nice, it's a thick, um, oh, this L.L. Bean, Pullover, $25 they want for this. <sighs> and I even mentioned the sad thing is, is that there are people that are going to buy it that, you know, they're not resellers. They're they're just uh, shopping, which is fine. The thrift store needs to make money. But, yeah, that last Columbia there they wanted, it was like 20 bucks or something. And then they have this little vintage uh, section just after the furniture and I'm just going to kind of mosey through the women's. Um, I'm looking at shoes. Again, I'm looking for things like vans um, or anything that stick out. I don't find anything, so I head out for the day. I want to go over everything that we picked up. Now, this is not a normal day. Normally, I do not find these types of items. Normally, it's clothes like i showed you at the end you know that stafford that croft and borrow which i did not pick up because i still actually have a small stack of clothes back here that needs to be listed and he isn't alfani oh look man he isn't man he isn't Sonoma. Red cap. It's a work shirt. Uh, it says Dover. It's by Arrow. St. John's Bay. It's one of those uh, fishing shirts with the um, breathing in the back. Um, pair of cargo shorts. Um, but nothing, nothing is brand name. They're all new sticky. Stay away from me brands. Okay. So the first thing that we picked up, let's try and go in order here. First thing we picked up was this, uh, National Geographic. I believe it's software. because this one says install disc. Um, they had it marked at 10, uh, it's a dollar. Anything that was purple, got for a dollar. I mean, I'll have to go through and check every disc individually. When I photograph it, I typically take all the discs out. We'll make sure everything's in there. It sounds like it's all in there. And hopefully I'll be running comps up here or here or somewhere within the screen. Um, I'll look all those up after the fact. Um, but as far as the thrift store's price goes, saved eight dollars on that. Mm, about eight fifty because I rounded up. Next thing I found was, I believe this. It is a Cracker Barrel Thanksgiving Traditions. Uh, it looks like a pie container, but the bottom is microwavable. Base, microwave, dishwasher, and oven safe. So you can cook a pie right in it. You can reheat stuff in the microwave. They wanted $4 for it. It has a cornucopia on the top with some fruit and pumpkins and stuff. Again, I don't know how much it's going to be, but they wanted $4 for it. So I only paid about $3.50. I don't see any major flaws or chips um, of course I haven't seen the inside they've got it taped yeah nothing major my Mike the wife may end up wanting to keep that all right next thing I found I believe are the cookie cutters 
Uh, these holiday cookie cutters, they wanted $7 for them. Again, I got them for a dollar. Um, Star Pack, home holiday cookie cutters. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, Star Pack brand. Never heard of them. But we'll look those up. We'll see how much those are going to be. And then the next thing was definitely this fondue set. No clue if it's all in there. I haven't opened it up. They've got it taped up shut. They wanted $10 for it. Again, got it for a dollar. Um, and if you look in there, it looks to be all bubble wrapped. So new open box, maybe. That won't be bad. It's by a Metro. Enamel on steel fondue set from 2000. So maybe that'll be worth some money. It was probably sitting in grandma's garage and she never used it. All right, next was plush. And I believe the first one was this sloth. Again, purple tag. They wanted $3. Got him for a dollar. He is from Be Happy. Um, and he's a Kelly toy. So, probably not a lot, but I don't know. We'll look at comps and we'll see what we can get for him. And the next one, I believe, was this. You, no. I think it was this Build a Bear. Um, they wanted $5 for it, but again, a dollar. It is a. It says Clubby 3. Beanie Bears Collection, it is a special tie, 2000 official club. Um, I did look up some comps on it, and I should be able to get, you know, 10 bucks. probably list them at $9.95. Like, tie Beanie Babies, it's not a big thing. But every now and then you find one that you can make a little bit on. So a dollar into 10 bucks, not bad. I might list them for a little bit more. Um, normally... I sell things on offers, but if I list him for $14.95 and someone pays full price, great. I just made $14, $13, um, 12 after fees and all that stuff. But if they send me an offer, even if they send me an offer for $5, I still make money and he sells quick. Next was this, I saw the dragon, I saw it like this, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Purple tag. They wanted $4 for it. It is Yu-Gi-Oh! And we'll comp that out. I don't know how much that's going to be. And then the last thing I found, it was actually on a toy shelf. And I didn't see the color of the tag, but I saw who it was. And it is Mickey. I wanted $4 for it. Um, or 7 I don't know which one. But he is... Walt Disney looks like uh, 2000 from uh, Parks and Resorts. So again, probably like a 10 buck. I don't know, we'll look it up. Um, there doesn't seem to be any major holes or flaws, just needs a good limp brush or cleaning. And maybe some of the strands cut away there, but otherwise he's pretty, pretty solid for a dollar. There's all the items. 11 doll hairs. One of those dolls plus sells, I'll make my money back. And everything else is profit. This is the way I shop. I don't know much about the National Graphic CD-ROM, so I'll have to do some research on that. I don't know anything about these cookie cutters or this fondue set, so I'll have to do research on that. Um, or the baking pan for that matter. But again, I think my wife's gonna end up keeping that. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to research those. We'll get them listed and we'll see how much we're going to make. Potential profit I'll put up here if I sell everything. And uh, I hope that sheds a little light on the biggest mystery that everyone on the planet's been curious about. Okay, the fun stuff. The first thing I'm going to comp here is that Mickey Mouse and i'm first looking for mickey mouse plush 2000 disney parks and i do end up locating um very similar that that nude one at the bottom that 
fifteen dollar one um, seems to be the same one, but at closer look, it's not. And then I see it, the Disney eighteen inch classic Mickey Mouse plush. That one right there. That one looks to be the most similar. Um, so I put in 18 inch and then I'm getting more similar items pulling up and then I'll switch it over to sold. There's five listed right there. Yes, I do look at sell through, but I don't live by it. Obviously most of my brands are going to show not good sell throughs. Um, and there's no exact matches, but there is one similar right there. There's 731. So I'm probably going to list that guy at 995 and probably end up, uh, see there's a 1494 free shipping. So 995 uh, for that plush and I'll probably end up taking uh, an offer, sending an offer for eight bucks. This is the uh, Thai Beanie Baby. Um, same situation, you know, there's some, they're all listed low, but I have confidence, not to say I'm a better reseller because I'm definitely not. But I have confidence in my listings. I think the photos will be all right. And I'm still going to list it at probably $9.95 and uh, take an offer on that. And again, I paid a dollar for these and it does not take long to photograph plush. It's literally snap, snap, boom, and you're done. Um, and this is going to be the blue sloth that I picked up. I just now realized that uh, I got two sloths on the same day. It's... Um, there's one is that third one there and I finally lock in my used and buy it now so I don't have to keep changing that um, show more click on sold oh look death pile picker get out of the way those are brown versions of the one I have so I'll probably ended up listing that guy for oh, it looks like maybe twelve ninety five plus shipping the next thing I look up is that National Geographic CD-ROM set, and initially it looks like everyone parted it out and are trying to sell each one individually. See, there's 90s, 70s, 70s. Um, but I don't think there's any sold. So if I when I look in the sold listings, um, and it almost seems like there's a case that's supposed to, that, that wooden case right there in that 2299 listing. Um, I did see a case like that at that store probably a week ago, and it is quite possible that the case, that's the case it was supposed to come in. Um, but as you can see, it only sold for 1299. So I'm probably going to bundle the whole set together and list it for 1495 or best offer and just take what comes to me and... Again, it's going to be a profit. Um, I'll probably have someone laughing, throw me three bucks, and I'll accept it right away, and they'll be good. And the next thing is the uh, fondue set, which I find little, if anything. There's no metros out there whatsoever. So either it's a bad brand that nobody wanted... Um, or just none have sold recently because that set was from 2000. And if they put something out in 2000, not a lot of people got it, or they got it and liked it so much they kept it, there's not going to be a lot online. I'll have to check Terapeak later. Um, however, I do feel that that one's going to be worth a little bit more just based on the um, prices of the other fondue sets that are on here so I'll have to do a little bit more research on Terapeak on that one and as you can see there's nothing sold for Metro so I'm hoping that it's just not a common one and if mine's new open box I can get some money out of it next is that 20, 20 Yu-Gi-Oh plush um, that pillow and you can see that there's a new one right there with a different graphic Listed for $20, but mine is used, and it's still pulling up a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So first, I'm going to take the dashes out. Sometimes that helps. And then I'm going to type in the Surreal, which you'll see is on those three little pillows there. And then the one up top. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm going to type in Surreal, and that brings us a little bit more 
just the pillows and I'm probably just going to end up listing that one for uh, $9.95. The lady at the counter said that she was actually going to purchase that. So I did say, you know, if she wants it, she can have it. And she said, no, go ahead. So I picked it up and again, $9.95. It'll probably sell in a couple months with Christmas coming up. All right. Uh, holiday time. Big foot sloth. Let's see what this guy is going for. Now, this was kind of scary there for a second because there's no souls. Again, it's not holiday season. Um, it's paused here because I'm looking to see if mine has those connecting hands, like the Walmart one there, but they do not. Mine's different. Um, I'll have to tear a peek it, but I'll probably end up listing them for like 14 Next is a the Cracker Barrel pie pan. I guess this is the last one. Um, this does have examples. Um, there are some listed. And I will definitely start with uh, Thanksgiving. So that one, they've got a 33, a 32. And then I go into the solds. And these aren't bad. So this is probably going to be the one that does me well this year, especially with Thanksgiving right around the corner. So I'll get that listed quick. And uh, thank you very much, and you have a wonderful day.